Okay, here we are at lesson 9.2, conditions for parallelograms. And once again, I'm going to go over um, these sections. <coughs> um, but if they're done for us, we're really not going to review them because they're already done for you. And you can read them on your own. And if you have any questions, you can ask your uh, math teacher for help specifically on those sections that you don't understand yet. So, um, <coughs> we're going to start with some theorems here, and the theorems are actually very similar to the ones that we covered in Lesson 9.1. Um, so, it, it might be a little confusing, but hopefully not. <coughs> in any case, the first theorem says uh, that if one pair of opposite sides of the quadrilateral are parallel and congruent, the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, all this is saying is that if this if this is equal to this, right? And not only that, if they are parallel and congruent, meaning um, they're the same length and they have to be parallel, then no matter what, this quadrilateral is a what we call a parallelogram because by the virtue of having the same length sides and parallel, then this is also going to be parallel and congruent, okay? And there's a theorem there that proves that. You can go ahead and read that if you want, um, but... <laughs> Most likely you won't, so I won't cover it. Okay, theorem two is um, the theorem that says that both, if both pairs of opposite sides of a quadrilateral are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, um, if this is uh, congruent to this, and if this is congruent to this, then no matter what, you're going to end up with a parallelogram. Okay, and um, if you had you know, four sticks where, you know, you had two pairs of congruent size sticks. No matter what you do with those sticks, if you combine all four corners, you're always going to end up with a parallelogram. Uh, I wish there was some kind of an explore activity that we could do that, but uh, you're just going to have to believe us for at least this one. Okay? Theorem, oh, sorry, theorem three says that if both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then the quadrilateral is a parallelogram. So, uh, I wish they didn't have these diagonals drawn here, but if this is parallel, or sorry, if this is congruent to this, that opposite angle, and if this angle is congruent to its opposite as well, then you have a parallelogram no matter what. So, uh, that's theorem three. Theorem four says that if the diagonals, oh, um, see, I've, I've drawn this from a previous lesson, but let me draw it again. If the diagonals bisect each other, so uh, if, if this line here, let me highlight this, if this line here, right, if this line here and uh, this line here, if they intersect, right, at that, at that middle point right here, and they create um, equal length, so this is equal to this, and this is equal to this, right, then you have a parallelogram. Okay, so those are the four theorems that are being covered in this particular lesson. Let's go ahead and jump into this your turn section. And if you want to refer back to the pages where it starts with theorem one, you can go ahead and do that. But if this, uh, but if you remember, um, this says that if you have a side length that is both uh, congruent and parallel, right? If it's congruent and parallel. I mean, we don't normally draw it at the same time, but if they're parallel, at least one, uh, then you have a parallelogram, okay? Uh, theorem, oh, hold on. What happened to theorem? It jumped straight to theorem two. I don't know why I did that. But in any case, theorem two is that if uh, you had both, if you had two pairs of parallel sides, so this is parallel to this, and this is parallel to this, you have a parallelogram, okay? <clears throat> theorem three, right, said that if uh, both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, meaning this is congruent to this, and this is congruent to its opposite, then you have a parallelogram. And lastly, theorem four said that if the diagonals bisect each other, so if this, and let me change the color here, uh, bisects this, right at this point right here and it makes equal side lengths or yeah equal segments then it's a parallelogram now i don't know why they didn't cover theorem one but <coughs> they covered the last three okay here we are explained four we're verifying figures of parallelograms so we're just using algebra to um 
you know, use our knowledge of parallelograms uh, to solve for certain variables in, in, in segment lengths. So we are told, uh, or here we are at the year turn section, we're told that z equals 11 and w equals uh, 4.5. <coughs> Excuse me. We have to find f, or angle f and angle h. So we need to find this angle and we need to find this angle. Okay? So, um, let's see here. Um, let's go ahead and just plug, we just plug those in, right? Yeah, we're just going to go ahead and plug those in. So, angle f, angle f. Right, was 9z plus 19. So we know that instead of z, we're going to put 11. And we get that from up here, remember? So 9 times 11 is 99 plus 19. And then this is, this is going to be what, uh, 118. <clears throat> and then angle h was what, 11z minus 3, uh, 11 times 11 minus 3, uh, 121 minus 3, which ends up as 118 as well, and they're both equal, so um, the measure of angle F was 118, the measure of angle E, we were told was right here, 62, sorry, oh sorry, what am I doing, we're, we're not putting the values, we're we're saying F is equal to H, and angle E is equal to angle G. There you go. All right? The opposite uh, is a parallelogram since, uh, what is that, theorem, theorem 2? Yeah, the or sorry, theorem 3. All right, so you can you can write the explanation in, in word form, or I'm just going to write theorem 3. All right, here's question 2 for this your turn section. Uh, A equals 2.4, B equals 9. Okay, so, um, what do they want to know? I guess they, they just want you to, to justify this Q, P, and 7A, right? And so instead of A, we're putting 2.4. Okay, so uh, 7 times 2.4. 2.4, what is that one? 16.8, 16.8, and then what RS is the opposite side, uh, 2A plus 12, 2 times 2.4 plus 12, <coughs> what is that, 4.8 plus 12, 16.8, so QP and RS are congruent, and then let's see, let's do angle Q, 10b minus 16, 10 times 9 minus 16, what is this, 90 minus 16, oh, what is that, 74, 74 I believe, yeah, okay, and angle R is 9b plus 25, 9 times 9 plus 25 equals 81 plus 25, is that right? <clears throat> I feel like I did something wrong here. Uh, let's see. 106. 106. Oh no, we haven't done anything wrong. Those two angles are not supposed to be congruent. They're supposed to be supplementary. And if you add up one, uh, 106 and 74, you do end up at 180. So we have the correct angle measures. Okay. All right, question number three. X equals six. Y equals three point five okay let's see um let's start with this segment right here jn okay so jn maybe it would help to keep the colors consistent yeah mr kim let's do that jn equals 2x plus 2 okay so instead of x we're putting 6 so 2 times oops 2 times 6 plus 2, 12 plus 2 is equal to 14. And so the opposite side, let's make that orange. Oops, I wanted the highlighter, unfortunately. Let's try that. So NL. Uh, NL 
uh, is what I have 4x plus 10, 4 times 6 plus 10, oh sorry, it's minus 10, I didn't copy it correctly, 4x minus 10, and I wrote 12, why did I do that, what's going on here, 10, What is this, 24 minus 10 equals 14. Yeah, so those two segments equal each other, which is exactly what we wanted. And let's change the color here. Let's make this one pink. M to end here, right here. Whoops. I want to give me a straight line. There you go. All right, MN is 6Y plus 1. 6 times Y is 3.5. Plus one, and again, where are we getting that? It's green right there. Uh, let's see, 3.5 times six. My calculator tells me it's 21 plus one, so 22, okay? And lastly, let's go from here to here. Oops, let's do the highlighter from here to here. Different color, let's try that one last time. NK. Okay, so NK. Uh, 8y minus 6. 8 times 3.5 minus 6. 8 times 3.5 is 28 minus 6 equals 22, which is what we expected, right?